Jadu, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do, please? Uh, my name is Chedo Oraka, aka the Black Yorkshireman, and I'm a rap artist from the city of Hull. You take me way back to when you first connected with wrestling. What was that like for you? Where were you? What were you doing? I think the first wrestling match I watched was definitely on like a VHS. I, I'm, I'm thinking it was like a pay-per-view and I'm thinking it was Hulk Hogan. Yeah, like Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior sort of times, like Randy Savage, like them sort of, Roddy Piper, them sort of guys, do you know what I mean? Like. But it was the Hulk Hogan's like my first memory, I think, of, of wrestling. Yeah. And uh, maybe Ultimate Warrior when he's, he's like entrance walk when he was just like go mad and like run out. <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was like, it was on some sort of VHS, taped, yeah. like someone had taped it, like still had like the little like the track, you had to like press the track in for all the, yeah. the skittery stuff to stop. Yeah, man, that was definitely my introduction introduction to wrestling and all my mates used to come because I think I was like the first one out of my mates to get Sky uh, and we all used to watch like the pay-per-views we used to watch like Friday Night Raw Saturday Night Smackdown at mine and then also like I used to have the video games as well so like Warzone and Attitude on the PlayStation Do you know what I mean so yeah good times really like I feel like they were some of probably the best times of my childhood Staying up like, we'd all like stay up for pay-per-views, like some of us would fall asleep and then we'd have to wake one of us up like and then yeah it was on because only like one in the morning, like Wrestlemania, SummerSlam, like Survivor Series, like all them like epic pay-per-views man. Good, that, like I say, good times because it'd be something to look forward to. So we'd be lacking out on the Sunday night, like people would come and sleep at my house on a school night. We'd be lacking out, but the, and then we get a takeaway. But the main, the main event of the night was the pay per view. Do you know what I mean? So and then we'd all be like tired the next day, but we'd all be so gassed as well. Like, yeah, it was sick, man. Beautiful, man. Yeah, I love, I've got a lot of relatable points to that. Yeah. Uh, one of my next questions is around connecting with certain characters. A character that you connected with personally. Did you see yourself in any of those characters? Like, I loved. I, the Rock was my guy. Yeah. Rock, like, for me, he's the best of all time, like the best sport entertainer. Mm -hmm. Technically, might not have been the greatest. Like, his finisher was the people's elbow, do you know what I'm saying? Like, but te like, technically, might not have been the greatest, but he was definitely an athlete. Mm -hmm. And I think he did so much for the business in terms of, like, his confidence. Like, his, like, his speeches before he'd walk out mm -hmm. were legendary. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's like Versace shirts. He was just a flamboyant guy, do you know what I mean? Like, everything he did was like with pizzazz. Like, such a sick guy. Really, really like rated the rock. Rock's my, my, yeah, my goat in wrestling, definitely. Obviously, Austin. But for me, like, the black guys weren't really the main guys when I was, was when I was watching it. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna put Rock as a black guy, to be fair. Uh, there was obviously Rikishi, uh, Varouk, but I, I tell you something, one of the most iconic walkouts though has got to be D'Lo Brown though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. D'Lo Brown was a G, do you know what I mean? And then obviously the God, like the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like obviously you've got like the Godfather. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm going to say The Rock was, because I just love the confidence. Mm -hmm. Like I love the fact that, because when he first came in, he was sort of a bad guy. And then he ended up being like the fans' favourite, and I just think like some of his catchphrases and yeah, man. As soon as you heard, as soon as you heard like, if you smell, and then like, did it do? What the rock is cooking? Like the crowd is going mad, and he's just walking out of his sunglasses. The like, yeah, he's he's a G man. He's a G, the rock man. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Can you tell me about where your confidence as a performer comes from? You obviously have this larger than life persona on your music videos. Uh, can you tell me, have you always had that confidence and, and has that always been there for you? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not really one of those who says I've got an alter ego, but when I am on stage, like I do feel like I'm myself, but I feel like I'm like an amped up version and it's all about the entertainment. And I did spend a lot of time watching wrestling. So you know what, maybe, 
maybe like I love wrestling. I always I've always loved characters, whether whether good or bad. I've all, it, when, if someone's a character and, and they're a lot, like my favourite boxer, I know we're not talking yeah, about, bring it in. is Chris Eubank Sr. Yes. Not, not Junior, Sr. The real Chris Eubank, do you know what I mean? Like, and he, there's no one that I'd, as, he's like for me, probably top three favourite sports stars for me. Mm. I feel like his impact on boxing was like crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like the jumping over the ropes. Everyone thinks Naz Nazim Hamid made that up, but the originator for jumping over the ropes is Chris Eubank. And just the fact he just stand there like like that looking around. Like I, I just love characters like, and I love people who can get into character because it was obviously a character for him. He knew he had to do that to sell tickets. Austin's not, Austin's not drinking, Stone Cold Steve Austin's not drinking Budweiser on a Monday night. Do you know what I mean? And clapping cans together and stuff. But he did it to like, to sort of gas up the whole thing so people bought into the brand and that's what I love. So yeah, I think I probably indirectly did take that on board to be an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. I just love Mavericks, do you know what I mean? Like people who don't do it normally. Would you describe yourself as a Maverick? Can you yeah, I'm, I'm the biggest Maverick this city's probably ever seen, if I'm going to be honest. And, I, and I'll say that with my chest. I don't really think there's been a front man like me because I've, and the reason being is because there was really nothing before me. There's been indie bands, punk bands before everyone else. Do you know what I'm saying? Or no one that was really doing it in a Hull accent and talking about the things that I was talking about. I paved the way. I feel like I'm a real trailblazer and I feel like, yeah, I'm a maverick. I don't really do it like anyone else. Do you know what I'm saying? And I pride myself on that. There's been a lot of, there's a lot of baby chedos because of me now do you know what i mean in this scene so and, and and i'm grateful and i'm privileged but where did you find that confidence that, that allows you to sit here and, and, and obviously make these what you know bold mm. claims and you can back it up mm. you know we go and you know anybody that watches this mm. go and watch youtube go, mm. go and watch your social media it's all backed up but has that confidence always been there for you Jay? i put it down to one person it's my mum right when i was growing up i was quite timid I ain't gonna lie, like I was quite timid. I was always tall, but lanky and just a bit within myself. Uh, but it, it, I get it from my mum. My mum's the most shameless person you will ever meet. Like she does not, she doesn't, she doesn't get embarrassed with anything. And I feel like I've got it from her. I must have done because my sister's a bit. My sister's confident, but she's a she's a, she's quite within herself. Where I feel like I've I've got this self belief from my mum, this resilient behaviour from my mum, do you know what I mean? This never give up behaviour from my mum. And like some days, come on, like we're human beings, aren't we? Sometimes we don't feel that confident and we sometimes we just feel like, oh, can't be bothered. But I still, it, the, the light never dims. It's still within me, do you know what I mean? Like even when I'm having a bad day, like I still think, you know what? You're Chedo Araka, man, you're sick. And sometimes it's hard to think like that, but I've been blessed. That's something that I've been blessed with from my mum and blessed by God, basically. Yeah. Chedio, off camera, I shared a little bit about my own experience in wrestling and, and how growing up with cerebral palsy, I looked at Mick Foley and the pain that he went through, even though it is theatre. You know, the pain that he went through really motivated me. It really inspired me to carry on, to get through stuff and to keep going. I wonder, you know, go, go, uh, going through what you went through when you were younger, was there anything similar for you? Did you gain anything from watching wrestling and and that experience and that confidence? I feel like, yeah, it was, it, uh, I'm, I mean, anyone who's wa watched me, watched my career, knows me, see my podcast, listens to my music, knows, yeah, it wasn't always easy growing up on, on Norfolk, being a black kid on that stage, you know what I mean? But one thing I will say, I will not ever say that I was a victim. I will never use it, I, it's not a victim thing, do you know what I mean? It's just part of my story, it was tough, I suffered racism. There's, I'm not the only one that that's ever happened to, it's just a part of my story, that's why I always talk about it, but I'm not a victim, do you know what I'm saying? And what I'll say is that it, it it's, it, I wouldn't change it. Do you know what I mean? It was tough at the time, but I wouldn't change it. The reason being is it's made me the person who I am. And it's probably the reason why I'm so confident because I've been, if I can survive Norfolk in the nineties, I can survive anything. Do you know what I'm saying? And I feel like it made me, do you know what I mean? And I feel if I didn't go through that, like I said, I just wouldn't be the person I am today. For me, the inspirations that I got was really no one from the estate. I'm not going to lie. Cause there was no one that really looked like me, but my probably, 
role models or people I look up to was people on the television, do you know what I mean? Footballers like Ian Wright, Les Ferdinand, do you know what I'm saying? Chris Eubank. And I don't just want to pick black footballers, like they're the ones who I related to and they're the ones that I gravitated to, most definitely, but I'm a Newcastle fan. Alan Shearer is like my, my god, do you know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's the guy, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, footballers like Faustino Aspria, like they were the people I was looking to like for, for, for influences. Again, I wouldn't really say Shearer was a maverick, but a lot of them people that I've talked about, mavericks, Faustino Aspria, maverick. Do you know what I mean? From Colombia, we all know what goes on in Colombia. Do you know what I mean? And he's come to the. He's, I remember like when he first came to Newcastle, and he's in like this, this fair jacket, like in the snow. The fair's just sticking to the snow, and he's just like this black guy, and he's just there. And I'm, he's, I'm thinking, what, what's this guy doing here? And he's probably thinking, Newcastle. I've probably never even heard of the place. Do you know what I mean? But just them moments like that always stick with me do you know what i'm saying like i know we're going off topic here yeah, uh, and in, in in terms of wrestling like I'll, I'll keep on going back to the rock i know he came from like a wrestling sort of family but again i'm there wasn't loads of people that looked like the rock when he when he was in the wwe do you know what i'm saying and like again just the confidence so it goes always goes back to the confidence that self-belief and i feel like if you're confident and, you, and you've got that self-belief then people start to believe in you do you know what I mean? No one's going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Yeah. The deal over on walk. Just that swagger, man. He's just walking like, you can't buy that. You can't buy that sort of like confidence and self-belief. Like he really, he really thought he was the man when he's walking to the ring. Do you know what I mean? And no one can take that away from him. So that's what I gravitate to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I gravitate, unfortunately. Well, it's not unfortunately, but I gravitate. So even like you, Dom, with, with, with the condition you've got, that's like inspirational. I gravitate to people who, no offense, if your life's been plain sailing and you've been very privileged, I will not gravitate to you at all. Do you know what I mean? That's just the way I am. Like, so yeah, man. It's documented that you, are, you were a teacher before you uh, went into full-time music. And I wonder, was there anything that you learned from your experience watching wrestling that gave you that confidence to support those kids uh, going through the challenges that they faced? I think definitely be more patient, show you more empathy. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be patient when you work in pastoral care. Mm -hmm. Because these kids are, are some of the most deprived kids in the city. Mm -hmm. Especially, I worked in Eastall for four years and like some of the, if I could, I, I'm not allowed to for safeguarding reasons, but if I could tell you some of the, some of the stories, some of the houses that I've been in, do you know what I mean? And like, these are just young kids, you know, just want a chance in life. Mm -hmm. And it's not their fault that they've been dealt some of the cards they've been dealt with. Mm -hmm. So they, they taught, they actually taught me so much, to be honest, like they taught me how to be a better man. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And they taught me that I've got a platform, so it's only right for me to inspire and use that to inspire these kids. Do you know what I mean? Because some of these kids like depend on you, like they depend on you more than your parent, more than their parents. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of these kids come to school to get fed. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking. This is the type type of deprivation we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? They're coming to school to get fed. Like they're coming to school to to get a hello, how you doing? In the morning. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, what have you been up to? Just normal conversations like that that we all take for that we take for granted because we've had that from our parents, or like we, we, we we're in environments where love is primary. These are these kids. Some of these kids are invi invi in an environment where it's not like that. So they they taught me a lot about myself and how I should act and and like I say, like I say, I'm a role model, like. I'll, I'll say you now, I don't want kids to do everything that I've done, but I understand my platform and I understand my position. So I can't be out here acting wild all the time. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not perfect. No one is, but I understand I've got a bit of a position of power in the community anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And in the same way to segue back to, to the performance and, and the wrestling side, mm. you are a very different person you know, for example, in that environment than you are on camera. But am I right in that you are a different person off camera? Is there any bleed? To I don't, you know what it is? To be honest, though, I don't really think there's much difference. Okay. Like I said earlier, like I feel like when I'm on stage, I'm myself, but I'm just amped up a bit more. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm like super cheerdo when I'm on stage. Do you know what I mean? And then when I'm when I'm sort of doing my music videos again, it's like super cheerdo. But maybe, yeah, maybe, you know what? Maybe I am in character. Maybe I'm not ready to admit that just yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Because uh, then I feel like you can blur it. Like you say, if you do something mad, like kick someone in the crowd, you can say, oh, well, I was just in character. It's not the real, it's not the real chain, do you know what I mean? But I feel like it's me. I just say I take influence from all the entertainers that I admire, do you know what I'm saying? And then I apply that when I'm on stage and when I do my music videos. All right, Chedu, so you've got the lockdown crew, right? So I want to know, just like the Nation of Domination, just like DX, who is in your faction? You can choose a wrestler, you can choose someone from the lockdown crew. Who is in your faction, please? Oh, how many have I got? You can have as many as you like, mate. John, would you like me to limit you? Would you prefer? Yeah, look, because we could, six? mate, we could, we could go on forever. Got four to six. I think you've got to have the taker in there. Okay. Undertaker's, he's the, he's like, he's like the, the granddaddy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, I mean, how long was his career? He's just finished. He's about, ju two, about a year ago. This mad. Mm -hmm. I, I, how can you? That's crazy to be wrestling for that long, like. And he's got one. By the way, he's got one of the probably. Probably the best ever character. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So Taker's definitely he's there. The, obviously the Rock, Austin. You can put these in if you want. Oh, we got we having are we having like real life people in that? Put real life people in there as well. Yeah, I probably have these in there then. So yeah, we're saying we're saying Taker, we're saying Taker, Stone Cold, Rock, these. I'm gonna need more than six though, I think. Yeah, go for it. Bring it up. Eddie Guerrero. He's probably one of my favorite technical wrestlers, yeah. to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's five. Bret Hart, because I feel like superstar. Shades, long hair, leather jacket, absolute G. His rival, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Uh, I know I don't know what this dressing I don't know what the dressing room banner would be like with this collective to be honest, but uh, I'm gonna have ten. Sorry, it's gonna be mad. Triple H, because I think he's one of the best baddies of all time. Uh, how many was that? Is that seven? I was invested. I think should we say it's seven because I was invested there. D I'm gonna say D Lo. Okay. Just for yeah. the walkout. Dilo, yeah. That's a sick collective, that though, isn't it? Cool. I like it. I like it. Yeah, man. Any any honourable mentions? Uh, honor, honourable men, honourable mentions. The people, the, the people in real life that you... Honourable mentions for Joe. Yeah. Joe the Fed. Des then definitely honourable mention. Honourable mention to Ric Flair. Dudley Boys. Mankind. Of course. Shout, shout out Hulls Mankind, Dom behind the camera. <laughs> uh, Kane. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I probably, I've said loads, haven't I? Like, that's good. That's yeah. It's a, a badass lockdown faction. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me your favourite wrestling match of all time or series of matches? I'd say Man Mankind Taker, definitely. I'd say, Man I'd say Taker, Shawn Michaels, Hell in a Cell. Kane's introduction, like that was, ah, oh, that was mad. I would say, God, a lot of them are going to have mankind in them. I'd say mankind. I'd, no, Cactus Jack, Triple H, when Triple H pedigrees him onto the, onto the uh, drawing pins. That was that was crazy. Tables, ladders, and chairs uh, match with the Dudley Boys, the Hardy Boys, and Edge and Christian. That spear when he spears him when he's got when he's holding the belt. Crazy. Uh, one match that I'll always remember, and I can't remember what pay per view it was, it was a real dodgy pay per view. It was The Rock versus Mankind I Quit match. Yeah. Do you remember? Forklift. Yeah. And I just remember it was brutal. Like, I just remember The Rock's just smashing his head with the with the steel chair and he's just like like absolutely relentless and obviously mankind quits but and i'm not surprised he quits because he takes a lot of punishment uh and i'm gonna say my favorite match well oh, not my favorite but one of my favorites anyway is rock versus stone cold wrestlemania 19 
because that's the first time he beats The Rock. I mean, the like, first time The Rock beats uh, Austin. Uh, and I loved it because obviously we all remember WrestleMania 17 when they fought each other. That, 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 that's probably one of the best build-ups ever. That's uh, the Limp Biscuit song. And, and I just remember that just the build-up to that Austin versus Rock, the two top guys, and I was gutted when Vince screwed the Rock over, man. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then I was happy when Rock got him back in uh, WrestleMania 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there is that, it was that emotional connection. Yeah. When you mentioned, you know, as a kid being in your, in your bedroom, what would it take, Jadu, to get you back into it? Is it something you're interested in? Would you go and watch, you mentioned off camera, you know, Reference Bobby Lashley, who is still performing. Yeah. Is there anything that would get you back into it? Are you at least a little curious, or is that something you? Really uh, I don't know. I feel like I don't know if it's just a nostalgic thing, because yeah. it was good. Like I say, like wrestling back then was unreal, man. Yes. Like Raw, SmackDown. It's like I said, it's like some of the best probably moments of my life, mate. Like. We'd like practice wrestling moves on each other and stuff, like rock bottoms and pedigrees. Like I remember one story, like one of my mates pedigreed one of my other mates, uh, my mate Danny Litchfield in his house. And I remember like he spat, like he literally like we like, knocked him out. Like it was it was brutal. Do you know what I'm saying? But there were the things we used to just have wrestling matches with each other and like the walls of Jericho. We used to like get each other in like that. And obviously if you if you sat. If you sat like on, on like, if you did it and then you sat, it'd be even more painful. Like get doing the ankle lock and stuff like that. Like honestly, them days were so sick. Like just doing them on like, like when was that school? St. Mary's Field or Fifth Ave Field. Like they were like the sick days, but I don't know if I should just leave that in the past. But if anyone wants to pay me to go there and like do a bit of journalism work, man, I'll go, you know what I'm saying? I'd do it. But now, nah, like I think it'll always have there. Uh, like a place in my heart wrestling. Yeah. Like I say, just for just the times, like I feel like it was good then. Yeah. Like my friendship group was at, probably at the strongest then, was all real close and no worries. All we had to worry about was getting a father for a takeaway and watching a pay-per-view, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Good times, man. Chadu, which song of yours would be your entrance theme? Maybe, tw like I've got a song called 21st Kid where like Deezy's on the intro and it's like, oh, do you know where 21st Ave is? And this woman's like telling him, like, trying to explain to him where it is. I feel like that's got a nice little intro and then it drops. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, nah, I'd love that. That, yeah, probably that. But honorable mention, the, my favorite ever entrance tune is D D Generation X. Like, the, like they did like a run DMC version, I think. Like, sick, 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 sick. That's probably my best collective, you know, run DMC. Uh, uh, DX, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I loved it, man. Loved it. What would be your message to any young people that look up to you or look up to the likes of The Rock and, and they're, they're looking at themselves and thinking, I'm never going to have that confidence. I'm, I'm always going to struggle with that. What would you say to those people? For me, no one cares. They don't. So all them, like, anxious feelings that you've got that you don't want to make yourself look stupid in front of people no one actually cares they might pretend to point fingers at you take the piss out of you rag you at first but they don't even really care they don't even know why they're doing it they're doing it because they're scared to do it so why not get one up on them or get one up on the next person do you know what i mean i understand it's hard to believe and it's hard to get that self-belief and honestly, Dom, I do honestly think I'm, I've been blessed with a, with a fantastic mother and just been blessed with a fantastic gift. But I feel like anyone can be a Chedo Waraka. What I'm doing is not too difficult. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like once the first person takes the mickey out of you, and the second person does and the third person does and you're, and you're still out there doing it then nothing really matters no one cares they pretend to care and like you say they'll all start loving you when you survive all the ridicule and people taking the mickey out of you and people 
pretending that they care. Because really, I, I, I'm a believer in there's more good out there than evil. So no one cares. If you have a dream, find what you're good at and be the best at it. And everyone will just jump on the bandwagon anyway. You know, like The Rock had his, you know, the, the, the people's eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Shawn Michaels had uh, his, his chaps, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what trait is it you think keeps people checking your videos out, keeps people supporting you, gets you booked on a tour you're about to go mm. on? What is your, what is your, uh, uh, your uh, people's eyebrow? Your stone cold stunner, as it were. Your My special finishing move. move. Nah, for me, I'd hope to think it's the words, the relatability, that, that when I speak, people feel it. And that's what I feel like the most important artists or sport entertainers, when they speak, people feel their words. And I feel like I've got that, that knack. People believe me. What I'm saying is believable. I think I'm relatable. Do you know what I mean? Especially, well, for anyone. I feel like anyone can relate to, relate to me. I'm Nigerian. There's a lot of Nigerians in the world. I think we're the one in three Africans is Nigerian. That's a stat for you. I'm from Yorkshire. I feel like Yorkshire's the, the it is the biggest county in the in the UK, but I feel like it's the realest county in the UK. We, we breed real people, do you know what I mean? Like, and I feel like, I hate this word. Well, I feel like my, my, my upbringing's made me sort of humble, do you know what I mean? Which makes me relatable. So I feel like my thing is my relatability, to be honest, not taking myself too seriously. It's great to, even though you've got that character and that, and that you know, that ability to, you know, to have millions of streams mm. as you've done, mm. or to be able to headline festivals as you're about to do. Mm. That relatability is... Do you, but do you know how you get to that place? By knowing yourself. Mm. Basically, you've got to be able to know yourself. You've got to do some soul searching. Yeah. Put yourself in some difficult predicaments and come out the other, come out the other side, still being alive yeah. and having your faculties. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what makes that's what makes certain people special. And I believe I'm one of those people. Don't get it twisted. Like, there's definitely been times when I've I've doubted my ability. Like, all this like confidence wasn't like I thought, like I've explained. It wasn't always there. I was a timid child. Do you know what I mean? But you have to go through trials and tribulations to find your purpose in life. There's a lot of people that still don't know their purpose, and I feel I do. And I feel I'm privileged for that, to be honest. Is there any wrestler or performer in modern times that you connect with on a personal uh, level at all? What, in the current wrestling now? Wrestling. It probably would be Bobby Lashley. Because I bet, like, I never, I never, I think I might have, like, watched his real early, early career. And that's when I stopped watching wrestling. But just the fact that he's gone on to do the stuff that he's gone on to do. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, when I was watching, there wasn't many guys who looked like me who were the big guys. Do you know what I mean? They the, the were the, the biggest of guys. Like Mark Henry wasn't, he was a, he's a big guy. Do you know what I mean? But he wasn't in stature in like his, his sort of, how he was appreciated in the WWE. He wasn't the biggest, you know what I mean? Same with D'Lo Brown, same with The Godfather, same with Varouk, do you know what I mean? There was only like The Rock, maybe I'm clutching straws trying to claim The Rock, do you know what I mean? But to see Bobby Lashley obviously go on and be the WWE champion and be one of the top guys, yeah man, that's, that's sick. Uh, is there anything you would like to add before we finish? Have I done my job properly, Chedu? Can you tell me, is there anything you would like to add as we finish up? So, Humber Street Sesh, the 12th of August, the Black Yorkshireman is touching the stage. So make sure you come. There's gonna be obviously some decent other acts as well, but I'm the main man for the day. So come and see me, do you know what I'm saying? We've put the lockdown boys, so me, DZ, Joe the Third, we're putting on a night at the K2 building. It's uh, in a restaurant called Cebu rooftop best view in the city playing some very very sick music that's happened on the 28th of july so make sure you come to that thanks for coming to room 73 this is room 73 as well this is our base this is where lockdown's based 
So if you want studio time, if you want workshops, this is where the magic happens. Let's create some magic, man. Jay, I want your Austin 316 promo. I want you to look directly into the camera. You can talk to your mum, you can talk to the lockdown crew. What are you saying? Let's go. This is Chedo Oraka, the black Yorkshireman. Yeah. All them kids who tried to pick on me back in the day. Who's laughing now? Six foot seven, handsome, Nigerian, and what? Jay, you beautiful.